I'm sitting here drilling out some forged machinists jocks for work thinking it would be a hell of a lot easier for me to drill these if uh, I could drill them on the mill and be stronger more rigid I'd have more room I wouldn't have to find a drill press stand because I need to really need to put this drill press on a good stand and then I got to thinking I could cut that off and weld a bar on there and bolt it to the overarm support. Let's see if we have any bar stock so I can do that so I could have a drill head on the KT. Well, it looks like we got plenty to choose from. I could go with this, or this, or this. Might even go with this. So I've got the bar done. A little bar that is going to attach to the column on this guy. So now I gotta drag this over to the hacksaw and cut it in half. Great. Well, the old drill press is in the old power hacksaw. You might be thinking that this is sacrilege chopping up this little drill press because it's old and it's rusty and it's made of cast iron and it's American made. Uh, that's just a tube right there. It's a two and a quarter inch tube. The castings themselves, they'll all be fine. This is already a rusty old drill press. I need to replace the drill truck. I need to do a bunch of work to it. That tube, I'm not worried about it. It's clamped into there using that bolt right there. I don't know how it's attached to that. Doesn't matter. I'm probably going to end up using this for some kind of adjustable base. But for now, it gets the slice. I may have made a slight miscalculation, but the scrap bin saves the day. Bastard. Well, the Sprunger drill press conversion for the K&T is pretty much done, but I have identified one problem that I will deal with at a later date. It's not as stable or strong as I would like but it'll work I'm gonna drill the holes in these tell you guys what I think of it and uh, maybe even set up a tripod while I'm doing it it's the next day and uh, I've used this little drill press attachment for the mill and I've had some time to think about the consequences of my actions um, to be honest I don't really like this modification. I don't like it. It's heavy. It's awkward. I need to have the arbor support on there. I need to bolt this up. I don't like it. It's unbalanced. It's not great. And I've thought about how I can make it better. What I'm going to do in the next video, take this guy out, this tube out. I'll strip the spindle off, the motor off, the motor mount off, all of that. Just leave this bare casting. And instead of using that to mount it, I'll use my new boring head to bore out two channels here and here, sort of half moon shapes there and there, so that it can sit on top of the overarms. And then... I'll have a mounting plate up underneath that just bolts up and squeezes it up against the overarms. That'll be a much better solution. I won't need to worry about alignment as much. And it'll be easier to get up there, on and off. It'll be, I'll take off all of this weight here and I won't need to use that. It'll be easier to use, it'll be better to use. So that's going to be in the next video. This is quick, dirty, it worked for what I wanted. So, let's go.